Thursday again, which means it's Friday for you, and we're here to talk about things that we know nothing about, uh, and take pictures of birds, apparently. Uh, I'm Chris, Jazz Sequence on the Internet, that's Gary, who's Binary Gary on the Internet, and that's Allison, who's Allison Plus on the Internet, <clears throat> and this is a podcast, or a video hangout if you are watching on YouTube, which, judging by the stats, probably you're not, but you can <laughs> if you want to see our faces and, like, get any visual references that might come through the audio, which happens sometimes. Yeah, every once in a while, I forget that this is an audio podcast and say, and, like, gesture with my hands and stuff. And or, like, we're looking uh, at something then describes it yeah you're like see this <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so it's been a week it's been a fucking week yeah chris how are you doing <sighs> i'm okay uh saturday was really 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 hard no friday was hard friday was really 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 hard uh saturday was hard uh, but less hard, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's 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 better, I guess. Uh, Friday was really hard. It's really hard to. So, um, for those of you who uh, aren't in our Slack channel, <laughs> <laughs> um, I lost my cat on Friday. Uh, a cat that's been with us for eighteen years, um, and has been, you know, elderly. For a while, um, uh, she started slowing down in her movements a couple years ago. Uh, it seemed like she was maybe having some like issues with her paw. We thought maybe she had like cat arthritis or something. I don't know why we have to put cat in front of like diseases that we know, like like cat arthritis. It's the same arthritis. It's just yeah. on, it's just in a cat. So, but we thought maybe she did, and she she had always seemed to have poor eyesight even when she was younger um uh but that seemed to get a lot worse so it made it harder for her to like she knew the layout of the house so that was not a problem she knew how to get place from place to place but um she wouldn't necessarily know who was in the room um always uh and that was a thing and then she also started just, like slowly eating less and less um, this is a cat that used to be uh, obese because um, uh, when she was a kitten, she um, had a, a sort of a nervous like fabric eating complex, uh, which I learned much, much later when I became a parent that that's actually a thing that kids do. They like bite their, bite their shirts yeah. and then they make huge freaking holes in their shirts. Um, and that's what she did with blankets. Um, except I didn't recognize it as being uh, a anxiety thing. I recognized it as being like bad kitty. Um, so um, yeah, she did that for a long time, and then eventually we we moved out of the apart out of that apartment, and she was we put her in like a kennel at night so she wouldn't eat her blankets while we were sleeping, um, and then eventually. Uh, it seemed like she was not doing that anymore. And we had left, we started leaving the food out all the time and she switched from go from eating the fabric all the time to eating food all the time. Um, so she had like an eating disorder, which we figured was better, but it didn't mean she was very large. So in her later years, she started eating much, much, much less and getting very, very, very skinny. So it didn't, um, it didn't strike us as odd when she like in the last couple of days, um, was eating very little, um, and it turned out that she had some sort of like infection in her mouth um, and like maybe on her chin. Um, and the last day was like excruciating to watch um, because she was in so much discomfort and she was, 
and I think she was hungry too, like, um, but she couldn't do anything about it because it hurt so much. Um, it didn't, it, it was all of a sudden, like it seems with cats in our experience, it's, it, stuff like this comes on, like you don't really see it coming and then it's there right in front of you. And um, that's how it was with her the night before she seemed okay. Like she seemed old. We thought maybe she'd be going in the next couple of days or, or the next week or something like soon, but we didn't see it coming the next day. And the next day we woke up and it mm. was bad. Um, I made an appointment uh, for that day. And um, we just like tried to give her as much comfort as we could while we could before said appointment. And then she was gone and it was really, really hard. Have you been going to the same vet for a while? We have, uh, well, there's a vet that's like literally down the street. And when it's something like this and we don't want to like drive to a vet, that's where we go. So typically that's where we go for this situation or emergent, other emergency situations. If they're, I mean, assuming they're open, if we need to get there quick, if it's, um, if, and cause the cats all uniformly pretty much hate the car. Um, if we <laughs> did, we did find a cat that we, uh, a vet that we like a lot better. Um, that's farther away. So that's where we go when like we need a checkup or something that isn't like time sensitive or something like that. Um, we could, I mean, like we could have probably walked there had Aaron been walking and had we wanted to, you know, do that with a cat that's very old and sick and not doing well, which obviously we didn't. Um, so like that, that, that particular vet is uh, basically associated with death um, uh, because of uh, how we have used them in the past. So to answer your question, yes, but we didn't go there. Um, yeah, so that's that's been that's that's my cheery contribution. Eighteen years, though. I mean, that's a long that's fucking a, time. She's she was a she's an elderly elderly cat. That's her maxes too. Her around eighteen. Like, I mean, I. I uh, Erin didn't believe me. She always, she always like thought she was younger than she was. And I actually pulled out her adoption papers um, a couple days ago and like, was like, see, she's 18 this years old. Proof. Yeah. We got, we got her in 2002. Um, not long after we got I, married. In fact, we might have even, we might have even had her um, had be. Yeah. before, before actually getting married and we're just like fostering her or something because we had her for a bit and then we gave her took her back and then um, and then she was adopted by someone who then gave her back because um, she ate her blankets um, and so we took her home. You're like, yeah, we know. That's... <laughs> Should we disclose that? Um... You don't put that on the, on the little adoption sheet though. You don't say, like, and by the way, eat blankets. <laughs> Do you not? Not usually. Not 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 at the humans. Not when you're trying to get them adopted. I mean, if it was like a rescue, you might disclose that sort of stuff. But it, like, but the humane society is basically like trying to keep their their capacity down so they don't have to put cats to sleep. And something like that would mean the cat doesn't get adopted. And if it's if it's there for two months and they need capacity, she's, right. she's getting put but down. But if you're if you're going to the Humane Society and you, you have in mind you're going to adopt an animal and they all have like eats blankets, like snores loudly, like all have like a negative attribute, like you're still leaving with a cat. You just leave with a cat with the least negative attribute, aren't you? Yeah, but they don't all have that. They don't all have negative attributes. They're not especially. all endearing. <laughs> yeah, or they're not all endearing. <laughs> um, yeah, like yeah, like cat snores. Like that's not that rough. <laughs> I don't know. I say Matt. this as someone who's allergic to cats, so. <laughs> I don't particularly care for cats in general, but I like Max. He's fine. I, the sad part is I really love cats. I just want to rub them on my face, and then <laughs> it doesn't doesn't work out well yeah, for me. That seems like a really bad strategy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah is that a, a lizard one. on top of that? 
bird feeder. <laughs> I'm usually okay if I just don't, like, if I'm in a room with cats and I just don't touch them, I'm, I can get by. That's sad. But, but it's really hard. And also cats can sense that they almost love you more when you're trying to avoid them. <laughs> I mean, you're basically speaking to them on in their terms. Let's, I know. Let's, I'm like, oh, this is your love language. It's like, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the story of Kendra, and I wrote a big long blog post about this, but the story about Ken, the story about Kendra is that because she was doing things that I had perceived at the time as like bad cat, like bad kitty, sort of things, like not like empathizing, but just seeing it as a behavior. Um, I was not nice about when she was eating blankets. Like I would stomp in, on the ground and scare her. And, and that led to her being afraid of me for a long, long time. Long after, like even just, yeah, for a long time, like I would walk into the room and she'd sort of skitter out. Um, and then slowly uh, over time, she became indifferent to me. Uh, and then eventually, and particularly um, when we had uh, cats that were not nice to her, which was most of our later cats. Um, and when we got the dog, which she didn't like the dog at all, um, she became like she was looking for shelter more, basically, and that's at the end, and and looking for comfort. And um, and slowly she started warming up to me to the point that after we moved, like when she went to look for a lap to sit on when we were watching TV, it was always my lap. It was never Aaron's lap. It was always my lap. Um, and yeah, so like I always sort of saw that as as her, you know, forgiving me for being an asshole uh, when she was younger. And like, I don't know that I can forgive myself for being an asshole when she was younger, like thinking about it now, like what she was like, that's an anxiety thing. That's how she was coping. And I'm just and I'm being an asshole about it. Um, but she could forgive me and that like, I don't know, like it's it made that makes, you know, the whole thing harder but you have lots of if it, have that memory and have have lots of other you know good stories and let's tell them if it's helpful the extent of cat forgiveness is i guess you're fine <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's whatever <laughs> i think it was more than I think, cats more, I think it's more than that i think that um it, it probably is but i yeah it, it, sure it probably is there 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 is a real acceptance there but I like to think like my cat who would be like like she'd be up she'd be up on our bed <laughs> like 7:30 in the morning in my face licking my beard and meowing saying it's time for breakfast come get get me food now. <laughs> she doesn't do that to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up sucker. <laughs> <laughs> I I was uh, Well, I'm glad you had almost two decades with her. Yeah. That's I mean, an she's, awesome She's, she, uh, I mean, she was around from like the beginnings of, of us being, you know, committed to each other, I guess. I mean, we were in like, we were together before that, but like, I mean, she's been around as long as we've been married. She's been around longer than uh, the kids have been alive. I think pet psychology is so interesting because I'm always so curious for these pets that like spend so many years with us, like if they recognize the events that are huge to us but like what they think of them like if they're even like blips on their general life radar of like oh well this is when they moved in and this is when like <laughs> this is when things and then there was this new this new baby came and like mm -hmm. i just don't know how they register things or if they're just it, like oh new kid on the scene great like <laughs> it, it definitely it definitely a thing. um moving into this house from our old house was definitely a thing that the cats i mean we we had luna and kendra at that point um, and no dog moving into this house. So like that, that whole thing, I think, and also the jerk cat we got rid of uh, before moving because he peed everywhere and he didn't want to pee in the new house and he was a jerk. So like, we sort of like did a lot of shifting of, of, of animals and places and that made a big difference. I think that was really uh, impactful in, in there, like a big event for them um, and a big event for us because it's buying a house. Um, mm -hmm. I think that uh, we, had, we had one cat, um, before the kids were born named Kendra no that was the one I'm talking about named Radar um, who was this kind of wacky uh, Siamese mix um, 
and I'm like doing this because she had this yellow stripe on her nose. Um, <laughs> that's that's what that is. That's a weird tick all of a sudden. Yeah. For those of you joining us by audio only, Chris is rubbing his face. I was rubbing my nose where she had the yellow stripe, and I don't know why I did that. It was weird. Um, anyway, she was sort of wacky in, in the shelter. She was really sort of aggressive in the shelter, but Aaron knew that when she took her out and, and like, dealt with her individually she warmed up and was and she also knew that um this was a beautiful cat that was going to get put to sleep because she was not okay in the shelter in the shelter environment um so we took her home and we had her for a long time but she was always a little bit a little bit kind of wacky um she once got a hold of uh, a muffin and like nearly bit aaron's hand off uh trying to grab it out of her mouth like she she bit hard um so when we had um when we had Gavin, she kind of went nuts a little bit. Um, like, was just like freaking out about the new baby. And so when another one was coming along, uh, before, before, before Lila was born, we, um, we released her, I believe we, we gave her back to the Humane Society because we did not want her to just get aggressive with the kids because she bit us hard, like, the kids do something that she doesn't like, and she was already kind of on edge. Um, she could attack them and do serious damage. So, like, I think it definitely, like, there are things that definitely are impactful for for animals. It's maybe not the same things. Like, they're not going to recognize birthdays, but like, <laughs> they definitely notice and pay attention to new changes. It's not like, eh, yeah, there's a kid here. Like, no, they're mm-hmm. they're they're seeing the differences. I have no idea what they think, what they thought when we brought a dog home. Like, I don't, like, what the hell is this thing? My uh, sister-in-law has a uh, a dog that previously had a cat that lived with him, a black cat, and so whenever they go on walks, like, he, whenever he sees a black cat, like, he just wants to go see it, to see if it's his old cat. Mm-hmm. That's so, really endearing. He's a, he's a sweet dog. He's a, uh, yeah. That's, yeah. that's sad, but also... <laughs> Like, if you sort of, like, personify that and, like, put, like, put, like, narrator voices or, like, uh, overdubbing on it, it's, like, it's, like, wait, is that Tony? <laughs> is that Tony? 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 Is that you? I've seen people I mean, act like that in public. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how he, uh, he rolls. I may or may not have been that person on occasion. <laughs> You, I'm like uh, that person has a baseball cap on. So does Tony. Managed, <laughs> successfully managed to get uh, water up my nose. <laughs> so, do we want a topic today, or let's topic? Okay. Okay. The topic this week is termagant. Termagant. <laughs> Also, like, I'm reading a lot lately, so all my words are from books you, I'm reading. Can you spell it? <laughs> it's T-E-R-M-A-G-A-N-T. T-E-R-M... Oh. M what? A. a. M-A-G-A-N-T. Termagant. 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 Yeah, it's, um, I get advertisements for this all the time. It's a treatment system for termites. Uh-huh. It actually, it actually works for termites or ants. It, it does both, termigant. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, well, as we, as we often do, we can break, break the word down. Yes. So we have term... Uh, which generally indicates the ending of a thing. Yep. And then Gant, obviously. Well, no. Term is a length of a thing. Like, you length, go to a, like well, a that, term of school. Yes. As a measure, like a, but a, but so a, a term a, innate would be the end of a thing. So we could have a term agantinator. That would be the end of a term agant. <laughs> I'm sorry. And what did you say? A gant is? Uh, it's a gant. You know, a gant. No, I don't. That's why I'm asking. It's like a gant chart. It's a gant. 
to. Uh, it's a thing that you chart <laughs> on the Gantt chart. <laughs> Every once in a while, our project manager is like, do we want to look at the Gantt chart? And I'm like, no. Like, never. There's never a time I'll say yes to that question. I'm never like, woohoo, a Gantt chart. I love that. I will never say yes to that question. <laughs> like, I mean, I get it. It's useful. Just tell me what's in the next sprint. Uh, or, like, we can talk about what's in the next sprint. I don't need a Gantt chart. It's, I, it's, especially if it's beyond the next, like, month or two. Like, yeah, that's cool. But if your household really had cool? a Gantt chart all of a sudden? Ugh. Would that make your life better oh. or worse? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that I can even articulate what a Gantt chart is, other than that I have seen them. Uh, so, Gary, since you seem to have uh, more a visceral recent, reaction to a Gantt visceral chart. reaction, why don't you share what a Gantt yeah. chart is for for the rest of us? I have and no idea. Listening? I think it stands for something, uh, but effectively, it is a you take a project or projects and break them over a period of equal periods of time. And then there's like a burn down of what will happen in each section of this uh, term, Gantt. And, um, and it's generally, at least as in my familiar with it, is broken down by these, you know, similar tasks across each, we would call them sprints, but effectively each unit of work, you know. So in this so next three week thing, we have here's development time and here's QA time and here's strategy time for the next term of Gantt. And, but does it does it actually is it actually based on in like, reality no it's it's web development well yes I, what i was gonna say is it actually based on like stuff that's in the backlog like do you put um, stuff in no the so the the gantt chart uh is separate from the actual tasks it is like here is when and what will be happen like when these things will be happening as far as what the tasks to fill that time is uh you know sprint planning so so I, this is why I think it's like arbitrary. Like, great. So this next sprint, you'll be working on Project X because that's where we want to allocate a percentage of time. Well, that would be fine, assuming that Project X had, you know, the right kind of work for me. Actually had an idea what they're going to do. You know, budget. Uh, nothing else explodes on any of the other projects. Like, it's, it's a very idealistic view of the world. It's not reality. Um, it's also extremely verbose. And it's like three months out, well, would it be better to make um, deployment on a Wednesday evening or a Thursday evening? Who the hell knows? That's three months out. Like, you know, maybe maybe we can talk about that, you know, when it's within a month, we can. And I get it. Enterprise clients need calendars and whatever, but my well, input on that think... deployment is completely useless three months out. I don't think that we use... Gantt charges, uh, charts. Even, Somebody uses uh, a Gantt chart and they really even, like it. Even with our enterprise clients. Somebody at your organization uses a Gantt chart and they really like it. There are people that like Gantt charts. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm not saying they're bad people. <laughs> I love I, that you say that as like, look, I don't mean to be divisive, but there are people out there <laughs> and they like Gantt charts. <laughs> so, so, I'm not even going to put them in like a... It's just the way they view the world and that's fine. It's the lens that they need to digest reality and i'm like use taxonomies other people use uh gantt charts apparently that's it yep so yep. in the in the uh taxonomy in the taxonification of, of the world of gantt the charts world. are in the category of bullshit, gantt chart right? users yes. are over here <laughs> <laughs> no i i mean i like there's i think there are ways to apply them that make them useful i feel like my experience with them in web development is like you know hey let's imagine if everything went perfectly Okay, well, let me stop you right there. <laughs> Let's not so, go any further. This meeting's a waste of time. <laughs> so to bring this back around, we have yeah. a term, which is a length of a thing, and a Gantt, which is obviously relating to a chart, of some, uh, mm -hmm. a particular kind of chart. So a term, a Gantt, is the length of time that is charted on a Gantt chart. It's a term, a Gantt. You have the Gantt chart. I'm laughing about the idea of it. Uh, you have the Gantt chart. And and this and then within the Gantt chart is the termagant. It's the I have length of time that, so we're, that we're observing. And so to portray myself as like anti Gantt enthusiast. <laughs> I just I, I you're, like one my those, Gantt. you're one of those anti Ganters. I've heard about <laughs> yeah. you. Also and, and in reality I'm more like, eh, I mean, it just seems like another meeting that would be
It's good to know where you stand. Have you all been watching Drunk History? Or I guess it's off the air now, but did you watch Drunk History when it was available? I've no. seen it, but not I've seen a couple. I've seen a couple. Uh, I wasn't it's, it's okay. I, I usually I usually watch them on, on, on YouTube when it has people that I'm interested in watching be drunk. Uh, yeah. or I guess interested in per- watching portray mm-hmm. drunk people. Um, so there was there was uh, there was the YouTube series and then it became Comedy Central series. Oh, I haven't seen the Comedy Central one. Comedy Central is a bit more produced because, well, Comedy Central. Uh, and they basically get celebrities to get, you know, drunk and narrate history and then and other people reenact it. And it is, I've learned a lot uh, and enjoyed it along the way. The funny thing about it is I always assume that um, that the stories, the historic stories that these people tell, they tell because they're stories that they know really well. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily true. I think a lot of times they kind of they kind of sort of know the story. So being drunk and telling a story they kind of sort of know becomes even like more left field. Because then they're like, and then it was like one if by land, two if by boat, two if by <laughs> horse, three if by train. <laughs> I think that's accurate. I think that there are some liberties taken, which is also fine. I'm um, here for a good game of telephone history if people learn things. I uh, I came down here because my neighbors were having trees removed, or tree, I guess, singular? I don't know. Having some yard work done. And it was loud. And now it's been quiet. I haven't heard. Maybe it's because of my headphones. Are you all hearing chainsaws and such? No. Not change. No. Term again. Back to back to the subject hand. I'm gonna take a field trip. I'm hearing occasionally occasional rustling that sounds like maybe a rattlesnake, <laughs> but I think it's just what it sounds oh, like. No, it's most likely not a rattlesnake. It's probably <laughs> oh, the trucks are still there. It's uh, it's most likely a um, like a cicada. Uh, uh, yeah, or um, or even just like Sorry. a squirrel <laughs> overhead running around in tree branch. I was I was gonna say, don't they make that? <laughs> I hope you're never. I hope you're never outside my house making that sound. <laughs> Isn't that the sound cicadas make? I mean, I always hear it on anime. That's, I know it's some <laughs> sound something makes. <laughs> it sounds like a slowed down That's version kind of, of the make. psycho, like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> my sister. We're not town, nearly so. exciting enough. I get it. Yeah, here. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, my sister's sure. in town, so I stayed up a little bit late last night catching up. And, uh... Is this her first time visiting the new place? Oh yes. Yes, this is our second visitor. Our second visitors. My parents came, and now she is here with uh, my nephew, who is freaking adorable. She lives in Florida. So she drove up from Florida. She is. She is from Jacksonville. Yeah. No, it's good that it's good that they're not your family the isn't afraid to to hop in the car and go for a drive. Yeah, I, well, so this initially came from um, this was supposed to be the uh, RNC weekend in Jacksonville. Yeah, was, right. Like, and so she was getting the shit out of Dodge. But but now it's actually happening thirty minutes from me in Charlotte. Yeah, <laughs> um, she didn't know she'd be getting closer. Yeah, although. Honestly, like we're far enough away that it's. Yeah, you probably don't I, see it. No, no, no. We're we're far enough out in the hills that we're 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 15 minutes past the NASCAR track, so we're no one wants to come out here. We're way out. Yeah, and and everyone, as you know, like the NASCAR track, you put as far away from human beings as possible. Well, so you put it's like the airport. Than the NASCAR it, track, then that's I mean that's basically no right way. past the human beings. Yeah. Um. What? It's like it's like the airport, right? You don't want to put it in the middle of town. Yes. You put it at the edge of town. Unless, uh, unless you're Las Vegas. Well, except I mean, that they don't. They, they have a, they have a racetrack. It's not in the middle of town. It's right as you basically enter town. Yeah, I think like that's the airport too, though. From oh no, the airport's the other end. But yeah, yeah I know I know what you're saying. Yeah. But I mean, out there, like, I like 
from the you north. Know. Trying to think if, of what direction we enter if from we south. enter Vegas from when we're when we're driving through Vegas and we're entering from the north because they're south of us. You gotta sneak up on it. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. If you don't, if you don't sneak up on uh, on Las Vegas, you'll get caught by you'll get slammed in the face by uh, a billboard about uh, personal injury lawyers or Penn and Teller. <laughs> I I was thinking um, the little flyers they hand out in the strip. I don't go to the strip. <laughs> I used to have to. <laughs> That's probably why. <laughs> yeah, I used to have to be there um, for trade shows, and so like in the state hotel and walk to wherever the trade show was happening. Even even if we're in even if we're in Vegas yeah, and, and the kids are, are sleeping, even if we're in Vegas and the kids are sleeping, and so we're looking for a dispensary. If it says dispensary on the strip, it's not the one I'm going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's it's a fine place to have visited in my life. I don't have any desire to go back. There's a bunch of weird people there. Yeah, the people watching people. is a bunch of weird people that really like living in Las Vegas. Like the people uh, who live there really I, like living there. Yeah. I haven't been there in a while, but I think yeah, you, I think uh, you have to. Well, I don't yeah. think yeah, you don't live there on accident. Yeah. I mean, I had a friend. Um, I mean, Allison, you, you and I both know this person because um, Joelle. She lived in Vegas for a while, yeah. and she hated it, like hated it, and then moved back to San Diego because it was she was not one of those Vegas people who yeah. likes living in Vegas, which everyone in Vegas is there because, yeah, you're not there by accident. Well, and I mean, in comparison to San Diego, come on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's a really good point. <laughs> So uh, we've reached the time when we get a answer to what is the term again, and uh, whether it's a or not, math term. Whether, whether what like a terminator. You, yeah. What kind of books do you think I'm reading? <laughs> I don't know. You told us earlier that you're reading a book about that had like a whole chapter about the rings of trees. Oh, so yeah. that's, that's a pretty a fair cool. game, I think. <laughs> that's a really great book, though. I do recommend it to anyone. Um, Braiding sweetgrass. It's a very good book. Um, it is dense though. It's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of information in there. Um, but termagant is a harsh tempered or overbearing woman. Oh. Um, and in the middle ages, it was used to describe the God that the Christians, the European Christians thought that Muslims worshiped because they didn't have any idea what was going on. <laughs> clearly. Wait, <laughs> they weren't going to stop and ask somebody. Um, <laughs> What but they, they in, haven't started yet. Yeah, in modern in modern English, it means basically like a shrew, someone who's overbearing and quarrelsome. But 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 your your initial definition definitely indicated uh, that it's a overbearing woman. Yes. Yeah. So did those the, Christians think the Muslims worshipped an overbearing woman? Yes. In what I found, it just said like general God. So I don't know. Non-gender specific. No, I just, I just find it, I find it interesting that like that's where the meaning comes from, and that you apply it to something else. And like, are you gendering the thing that you're applying it to now if it doesn't have a gender already? Like that's, I don't. It's a leap. Yeah. Someone, somewhere, someone made a leap. <laughs> but there also might be like actual texts that that leap was made, and I don't know about them. That's possible. I won't. Uh, I won't apply knowledge I don't have here, but I will. Uh, posit that maybe maybe that European Christians did believe that that Muslims were worshiping a woman God because there was this concept that um, wisdom uh, was a female gender and so like the the opposite of like being in control right the Christian masculine idea of God would be like worshiping wisdom and discovery and so I think it I think that it may be a um, applied in a spiteful way. Imagine that, <laughs> if you will. If you can stretch that far. Those, those goddess worshippers. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm glad that word's not in either of your vocabulary. It's... I mean, that's a good word not to have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been great. Like, I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> like, I call people this all the time. <laughs> I work with several termagants. <laughs> What? <laughs> oh, um, yeah. 
Do we have questions? We don't have questions. Probably not. Okay. But if you are a listener, uh, thank you. Uh, to our termagant listeners. Second, uh, you can always ask us a question on the website, binaryjazz.us. It's got a contact form somewhere uh, and a contact page. And you can also just catch us on Twitter, at Binary Jazz. And we want to hear your questions because it gives us something to do with the last 10 minutes of the show. I, Yeah, I think it gives us something to go out on. Yeah, and I, I clearly came up, like gave up on coming up with those questions. I ran out. Uh, questions. Gary has questions sometimes. Yeah, I have questions a lot of the time, although whether they're useful <laughs> or appropriate for the show is another, is a question in and of itself. Um, I, I have been thinking a lot uh, lately um, about running again. I think we yeah, talked about this. you mentioned that before, even though you hate running. Talk I us do. through that. <laughs> yeah, and so there's some logic behind this. I there is. I think one of the things I mentioned is there's just so much to see around here, tree-wise, uh, that is new to me. And so the novelty is not one off. And I take a half hour walk with the kids, and it's not enough. Um, I think the you other need to part run is, so you can go farther and see more things. That's it. Yes. Yep. How about a bike? Yeah, I I'm, I'm feel like I would biking more likely to kill myself on a bike. Oh, okay. With the, with the I mean, hills around here. Whereas, oh, you mean like with exhaustion? Like trails, yeah. Not I. Not like literally, like you're gonna fall and die. Oh no, that's what I mean. I mean like coming down a hill and like not being able to stop before a stop sign and rolling into. I was gonna say also, crack, I guess but the honestly, like, like it's not rush hour here is five cars. If the goal <laughs> is to see like more things, then like cycling might be a different focus. Like you're not necessarily being like. I don't know. Maybe I don't I'm know. not. But. I I I I would I would argue that that cycling can be that if you're not like all about like rushing or um or like doing crazy tricks or whatever. Like I see mountain bikers go like up and down the mountains, and it seems like like what's the point? Because they're not paying attention to anything. They're like looking at like, yeah. what, and you have to if you're mountain biking because there's so many things that could trip you up and make you fall. Um, but it's like, like look out for that route. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're if you're biking on streets, then you know, or paved areas, or even like a, a trail that's fairly well, you know, maintained. Then um, seems like you can look around while you're biking. Um, and I feel like, for me anyway, if I was running, I would be so focused on how horrible I feel that I would not be able to appreciate <laughs> any of the things around me. There's, there's that that part does concern me. I will be honest. Um, however, I do remember when I ran that there were times when I had. Like moments I, I want to recapture where, like I remember the park across the street from where we lived in Jacksonville and when I was training for something, which I don't have any time, I don't have any intention to train for anything. I think I'm going to take some of that pressure off. I'm just going to run for the sake of running. Uh, but I remember there were times like where, like, I don't know, like the chemicals, my brain was like blasting through my body at times, just clicked. It was that right point where suddenly it was just like, I felt, you know, momentarily invincible and like flying and just totally in awe of everything around me. Fantastic. Uh, I'm not sure if it's worth the suckiness of the running to get there. I guess we'll find out. But I also know that like my, um, like the food I craved ended up being a lot more like I wanted, like I somehow my body innately knew like what was in season and what was fresh. And like, that's what I desired. That's how I wanted to like refill the stuff that I'd used. It was, I don't know. I felt like I was a lot more connected to, I guess, connected to the earth. Um, and I want, I want to feel that around here. Like I, I, I have a desire to feel that around here and running seems to be the way that I can feel that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I will get these shoes in the mail tomorrow and be like, oh no, those will be good for a while. I've made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, it, it's entirely possible and I'm willing to find out. Um, yeah. But I mean, running, even if you like running, I think running kind of sucks in the beginning and then you move on yeah. and kind of get those endorphins or whatever, or all the science. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz.
Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.